Servus Männer, it's Red Bull Germany again. Today I want to discuss in a little more detail why our public broadcasting agencies, about which we hear a lot lately, are politically extremely aligned to the left. Of course, I mentioned that um, a couple of times already. I talked about this uh, also recently. And now there is a very interesting article. Oh, again, blackberries. A very interesting article that was posted on the blog of uh, a Mr. Reitschuster, a German journalist who always has very uh, keen and very interesting insights, especially about the media business here in Germany and the public media, public broadcasting, state media. Um, he knows a lot about Uh, what is going on there and um, he posted a very interesting article about um, yeah, it contains information about how the public broadcasting houses are structured how they maintain and assure this um, yeah, rather communist very far leftist mindset of their journalists of their employees and uh, also um, more Uh, relevant now or more recent now especially in the last two years what has happened there and what also led to some complaints from the side of the leftist journalists so <laughs> it means that the screening and the um, yeah, f political filters that were applied were even a little too drastic for some of the hand-picked leftist uh, drones there okay let's get right into the story so uh, he reports that um, several employees were complaining uh, to some yeah to some office in the public broadcasting house um, ID uh, the, um, and this was in northern Germany so the NDR not Deutsche Rundfunk they were complaining that It wasn't possible in the last two years to report about certain things. Yeah? The uh, publishing house, even though it is clear, it is evident that there is public interest, uh, but they said, no, we are not going to publish anything on this topic. And when I say the last two years, you of course know what I'm referring to. I refer uh, to the China bug and all these health measures. And then they also said that there is clear political filtering, that um, some terms are just changed and sometimes the entire message and the meaning of the articles are just, are just completely changed when um, the editor or someone who then revises the article um, is done with it. Yeah, and this is not surprising to us or to, uh, well, me and people who listen to what I talk about. Um, of course, you know that. But um, this article um, also goes to tell us uh, how this uh, can be, yeah, how this structure that works like that has been uh, realized. And then in that detail, it was new to me. It goes as follows. So he says that there is um, only a core of real full-time or, or um, uh, employ employees, yeah, public employees with a permanent contract. So they are uh, they're employees in the public sector, but they're basically officers of the state. Let's, uh, let's not mince words here. And they are selected thoroughly um, with an interview and screening process that assures that they are Maoist or far-left communists. And he also says that he himself, he, he remembers uh, one of his job interviews there it won, it, with one of the big media houses. And the very first question that he was asked is, so how, what is your, what is your political affiliation or, or where would you position yourself on the political spectrum? And he said, well, I don't want to position myself, but I am classically a social democrat. Um, Uh, um, which already tells you that, of course, I don't uh, really agree with him on many points, but uh, he, is still, he has still some valuable and interesting information on his blog, nevertheless. Uh, and uh, even though Social Democrat is left-wing, uh, <laughs> the interviewers were not satisfied with his answer. They clearly expected 
him to say, yeah, I'm progressive and I think we should raise awareness about this and that and yeah, justice, social justice, woohoo, um, communism, something like that. So a clear um, statement um, of where he uh, yeah, sees himself and that should be extreme leftist, of course. He could tell by the reaction of the interviewers. And yeah, that is the screening process. Just imagine that that is the first question in a job interview. I mean, in the industry, yeah, on the free market, such a question would be a, yeah, how should I say that? It would be a compliance case. It would be a reason for, yeah, mm, yeah, how should I say, maybe not really firing the interviewer right away, but he would be reprimanded. I mean, that, that is something you can't do. This is, this is a question you cannot ask in a job interview. What is your political affiliation? Crazy. Especially when it's in the public broadcasting, I would say, because the German basic law, the constitution, the quasi-constitution of Germany, or the law that acts as a constitution, it, it, it requires the public broadcasting to be ideologically yeah, neutral. <laughs> of course, very funny, ha ha ha. Uh, but uh, asking where is your political affiliation or um, how do you position yourself on the political spectrum and then demanding a clear answer, communist, uh, that is, it is not constitutional even, yeah? So, <laughs> okay, so this is how they reassure that. And that is the, the caste system that exists with the permanent, long time, long term, or yeah, not permanent, uh, not temporary contract people. But then uh, many or even most of the contributors, they are kind of free um, contributors. And that means that they don't have a contract. They don't have a permanent contract, maybe temporary contracts, maybe they work from project to project and they know very well what is expected from them and that they're replaceable. So if they don't do all that stuff, then they're <laughs> then they just find another person. Yeah, they, they don't even have to fire them. They just don't give them a new project. And that was also the discussion um, or the, the um, how should I say, that was the um, reason that many people speculated uh, was behind the fact that one of the um, a very prominent um, host in one of our um, public broadcasting programs, um, she was using this kind of crazy German gendered speech <laughs> and, um, and she said she has to do that. And then she, of course, backpedaled and said, oh, no, no, I misspoke. Of course, I do that because I think it's important. Of course, I don't have to do that. But first she said, yeah, I'm sorry, I have to do that. And then the channel was criticized for forcing the employees to use this uh, yeah, um, weird speech. I maybe, maybe I can explain a little more in detail in another talk um, what how German sounds when you use uh, New World Order language um, or concepts. Uh, it's not German anymore, let's just say. And um, yeah, she doesn't have a permanent contract. She is one of those free contributors. And that means if she doesn't play the game the way they want to, she's gone. Okay. So um, that is basically uh, what the article says. Uh, first of all, there is an interview process that um, uh, yeah, contains <laughs> the very uh, first question of uh, are you a communist basically <laughs> and that is the first screening and then of course every once you're in there even if you lie to them and you can sell the idea of yourself as a communist to the interviewers you know that you will not um, yeah progress in your career if you don't write like that and if you don't promote these communist or new world order or whatever you want to call it these these progressive ideas right and that's how they establish and maintain a yeah, more than 90 percent far leftist um, um, yeah, political orientation among their staff their journalist staff and uh, that is clear from surveys that are conducted among the uh, journalists there uh, and also, of course, when you just read the news and uh, watch these programs, you can tell. You can tell that they are all com commies. Yeah, it, it's it's not a question. Yeah, it's it's a clear observation. Okay, and um, yeah, and, and and that led now to some problems um, 
or yeah, uh, or that in the minds of some of these hand-picked um, journalists in the last two years when it came to the China bug, they said, hey, um, why can't we talk about this? And it And another interesting detail was there, uh, he also mentioned that um, the journalists there, they, they see themselves more as spokespeople or press secretaries of the state governors. So Daniel Günther, for example, is the governor of a northern state there, is it? Yeah, Schleswig-Holstein, I think. Uh, yeah, these northerners, I don't know, they're all the same. <laughs> um, anyway, so... Uh, they refer to him not as Mr. Governor or Herr um, Minister President. Uh, they say um, Daniel. Yeah, so they they are on a they call each other do yeah by first name. They're on a first name basis, so they're buddies. And whenever there is a story that is let's say um, inconvenient for the state government, then they either frame it as if it's not important. Or oh, it's not that relevant. Come on, it's it. Come on, man, give me a break. Or they literally just stop reporting on it. So that means there is an information ban of sorts, and that is how these people operate. They are not journalists that criticize or um, yeah question the authorities, the government, but they see themselves more as press secretaries, as speakers. So it's like this: these White House speakers who always have to um, yeah, <laughs> uh, function as spin doctors uh, in front of the press and always have to sell what the president in the White House does now to the people, uh, which goes along with a lot of lying and um, yeah, spin doctor activity. And the public media in Germany, they are fulfilling this function here yeah so they are they are spokes people they are speakers press secretaries of the government yeah and and many people don't realize that because in a naive or idealistic view uh, the public broadcasting originally should have been um, ideologically non-aligned impartial neutral and that they thought they can assure by Uh, funding it via this household tax so that they're not dependent on taxes but uh, this household fee but the problem is in order to get this household fee and in order to get more and more of it to increase it every couple of years they need the politicians and that means that in the end the political system of course uh, got the the power and control over the public broadcasting once again and um so this original idea that they should be independent of politics and just public broadcasting, that did not work out. Um, I don't know if it ever was the case. I mean, maybe you have to read some newspapers from the 50s or 60s, but back then, of course, it was under Allied control already, which is probably still is. But right now we can clearly, just by pure observation, see that it's a progressive communist operation. All right, let me know how it is in your country. As always, uh, let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. Servus, Kameraden.